Let's uh, look now at July this year when South Australian authorities decided against proceeding in an alleged case of a sexual abuse of a child with an intellectual disability. Now, the prosecution decided the child could not give reliable evidence and the accused was released. Tonight, Four Corners reveals the full story of the children and families from St Anne's Special School in Adelaide. Parents have spoken openly about frustrations with the legal system. Let's hear some of those voices. Clearly, uh, if abuse takes place, there should be a prosecution. And uh, whether that prosecution is successful or not, it's not the point. The law should take its course. It's as simple as that. If the um, the Archbishop and Monsignor Capo and the Catholic Education Office had come forward and said to the parents, we are so sorry that this has happened, we are going to get to the bottom of it, we're going to find out how the cover-up happened and what can we do to help you, it would never have gotten as ugly as it did. You know, they needed to control it. The need to control was to preserve the name of the church. So that was the major interest. It wasn't the children and families that were suffering. It was preserving the image of the Catholic Church. The reason why um, information wasn't shared with the parents was because there had been a police involvement, there was a criminal investigation, and I believe that as a result of that, that there were, um, there were restrictions about what people could be told. Well, that was Archbishop Philip Wilson there defending the Catholic Church's handling of this uh, dispute. Now, the reporter behind that story is Deb Whitmont. Her story on ABC's Four Corners goes on ABC One tonight at uh, 8.30 Eastern Time, and she joins us now for more. Good morning, Deb. I suppose, like with a lot of sexual abuse cases, this one was hidden for, for so many years. It was hidden for a very long time. And, in fact, what the story that we tell tonight is about how a number of families whose children, whose intellectually disabled children were affected, only found out what had happened 10 years after the event and they found out totally by accident. And I suppose they, they were also seeing their children, as your report shows, developing some serious behavioural problems. They, they could actually put a finger on what potentially caused all of that. Well, that's right. I mean, I found that very interesting because I didn't know very much about this field. But um, you can imagine, I mean, firstly, how disturbing it is for a child to have been sexually assaulted. Then you add to that the fact that this is an intellectually disabled child who can't express what's happened and can't reach out for help and parents who can't easily communicate with their children. So it's all manifested in their behaviour and you have terrible behaviour occurring year after year and the parents desperately trying to understand it but not knowing what to make of it. And uh, how long did it take the parents to get any form of, uh, of I suppose, recognition that this had gone on at St Anne's from the Catholic Church? Well, there was recognition um, from the current Archbishop Philip Wilson, who you just heard from, um, around 2002, some 10 years after the event. But there's still a, an enormous battle going on over compensation. And what we show tonight is there's certainly some evidence that the church could have and made some efforts not to reveal this abuse sooner. Um, now, we've put that to Archbishop Wilson and he doesn't believe it is a cover-up, but um, the parents certainly believe the abuse was actively covered up and I think, um, well, look at the story and judge for yourselves. Um, it's a very tricky area. And uh, what's happened to this man accused of all of these appalling crimes? Well, he was ultimately and rather late in the piece um, charged and was jailed and, in fact, he's now dead. OK, Deb, we look forward to the story. Thank you very much for that preview this morning. It's a